Hello, hello. Hello, everybody. Welcome. Welcome to Train Wreck Wednesday and another hump day out of the way. So, welcome, you guys. I am Cassandra. I am with uh, Pecan Porch Boutique. And it is train wreck Wednesday and we get to start on a whole new project today y'all a whole new project We're doing something totally new today. So um, And if you guys saw the um, the title of the live it is underwater whimsy So, you know, I got some good stuff planned for today. We're gonna do a little bit of whimsy a little whimsy you know, we did a little bit of romance last time. We're going to do a little bit of whimsy this time. So we're going to be working on this um, this desk that I picked up at a garage sale, y'all. Let me tell y'all. I found this desk at a garage sale, or, or maybe it's a little vanity, whatever it is. I found it at a garage sale, y'all. So, hi, sister. So, um, like, the top and two legs was, like, under one tree, y'all. And then two legs and the drawers was over on another tree at the garage sale but i went and collected it all and i picked this little puppy up for 15 bucks that's a deal so anyway yeah so i grabbed this up at a garage sale y'all and um and so somebody had done a very good job of spray painting it red which you know there's nothing wrong with spray paint you know I, I'm not uh, I'm not against spray paint, but they spray painted it all red. So um, so the plan is to kind of overlook that red, kind of put it in the background, the foreground, and do something a little bit different. So as you guys can see, I have already given it given it uh, several coats of paint here. So I'm gonna tell you what I've done, and then I'm gonna tell you guys the plan, cause y'all know. This is Train Wreck Wednesday, and there's always a plan. Now, whether we get to the end of the plan or not remains to be seen. All right, so what I have done so far is I have given um, this piece a couple of coats. This is the original color here that it was, this red. And, you know, red is my favorite color, y'all, really. But, um, but we, you know, we took, we're going to take it in a different direction. And, but I have given it two coats here of um, DIY's Blue Iris. Um, this is Blue Iris. And then I gave it here two coats of White Swan. And then I did a mix of, what I did was I took the Blue Iris, I added some White Swan, because I wanted to make a little bit of a lighter blue. And then I went in and I blended in some Monet's Garden. And I'll tell you the reason why I did that in just a second. And so that's what I did. And then I left these two front legs red just for a second because I want to show you guys something on that. Okay, so that's what I've done so far. So the plan, y'all, again, this is Train Wreck Wednesday. And we're going to do a little bit of underwater whimsy. Whimsy, y'all. Think whimsical. Look. Can you guys see this? We're going to be working with this guy. This is Octopus. This is one of the Roy Cycle decoupage papers, and this one is called Octopus. Isn't he beautiful? You know, when I first got this paper, I was like, what the heck am I going to do with that doggone octopus? Well, it hit me. It hit me today. And we're not through. Do y'all remember uh, Jacques Cousteau? Or am I dating myself again? Because I tend to do that on my lives. Um, Jaco Stowe, when I was growing up, he used to do these underwater adventures, you know, so. So, that was Octopus, and then we're going to add, in, inside the drawers, I'm going to add these, and this is Jellies. This is another one of the Roy so Cycle decoupage papers. This one is called Jellies. Isn't that pretty, y'all? Just some great colors. Um, and then, uh, the Octopus. And then... I also have these little, um, these are on my website, and I like to use these a lot. These are my little uh, porch pair-ups, and I pretty much have one for each paper that I carry. Um, and you can find these under in, on my website under um, Art Enhancements. 
So um, this one is a little octopus and I am going to decoupage him with the leftover octopus paper. And this little jelly, I'm gonna decoupage it with the leftover jellies paper. And I'm gonna put these on the side. Just kind of a little bit of extra whimsy because that's what we're going for today, y'all, whimsy. Okay, now, then we are going to use, y'all, the seashell mold. Isn't this cool? Look at all those. Look at this starfish, and they got some shells. They even got some doggone seahorses, y'all. Seahorses. Okay, y'all, I got to tell y'all another story real quick. Okay, so when I was little, we used to get these magazines, right? Well, in the back of the magazines, they had all this different stuff that you could order. Well, they had these little seahorses in the back. And you would order them, and they were supposed to grow and turn into these little seahorses. So I ordered them things. They came in a little old bitty package. I guess it was some eggs or something. Them seahorses never did grow. It just hurt my feelings. So anyway, we're going to be using the uh, seashell mold. Yes, hi, Claudine. Yes, those the papers are gorgeous. Beautiful colors. And then we are going to be using... this two pack seashore hi rebecca how are you this two pack seashore stamp isn't this cool y'all look at all the great sea stuff on here look at that this is the seashore stamp and one of the things y'all and i'm going to show you guys this in a few minutes one of the things that comes with this two pack um stamp set seashore are these masks Look at that. So anybody has, has anyone ever tried masking? I've only done it one other time. But I'm gonna show you guys how to do that tonight. So this stamp actually comes with the mask. Um, and um, I've done masking before, but I had to make my own mask. So you actually get the mask in this one. So, so that is the plan, y'all. I also wanted to introduce you guys to this little thing here. Y'all, this thing will make your life so much easier. It is an applicator sponge. And see how it's kind of split right here on the sides? You grab it with your hands. You can, like, put your, um, your top coat in a plate, saturate this with it, and then it's great for going across linear surfaces. And you don't get any of that stop and start like you would with your brush. So... This little blue applicator sponge. And it's available on my website as well. Okay. So, where do we start? Okay, I'm going to throw out a porch um, a porch quiz. So, I showed you guys the papers that we're going to use. I'm going to be using this um, octopus paper on top. Again, that's him. And isn't he just beautiful? So, or her. I don't know. How do you know if an octopus is a him or her? I don't know. Anyway, I'm going to be using him on top here. So, I'm going to throw out a porch quiz for you guys. So, I'm going to be using him white right here. Why would I have painted this white? That's the porch quiz. So, I'm going to be decoupaging him right here. And why would I have painted this white? What is the purpose of me painting white where I'm going to put the decoupage? That's the porch quiz for tonight. So somebody tell me that. Okay, so what are we gonna do first? Okay, what we are going to do first, I want to show you guys, first of all, I want to introduce you guys to these two little brushes right here. Y'all, I forgot I had these doggone brushes. They were in my stash. Hi, Dorothy, on the road, headed home. Can't wait to see the table. Be careful, Dorothy. Thank you. Okay. Um, y'all, these were in my stash, y'all. Y'all know how many stashes I got. But I watched uh, Lisa Boone from uh, Lisa Boone Designs um, do a chair the other day. And she used her, this is the um, French tip from Debbie's Design Diary. Can you guys see that? There we go. I haven't even used this one yet. And this is the um, the little Frenchie, um, also from Debbie's Design Diary. And I still have some of these on hand on my website, but we aren't able to get any more of these right now um, because um, 
uh, DIY is working on finding another um, brush um, manufacturer. So Tracy says, so the background paper is bright and stays the color your paint. Yes, Tracy, exactly. So the reason why I painted this white, when you want your decoupage papers, um, when you want the colors in your decoupage papers not to be um, muted down, you want to um, you want to actually paint underneath the decoupage paper white. If you paint underneath white, then yes, it will. You will your decoupage the image will be more um, the colors that you see. If you decoupage, and there's nothing wrong with it, because I, a lot of times I love to use um, darker colors under my decoupage. I, sometimes I like to use some of the colors that are in the decoupage paper. But when you do that, it kind of um, blends your paper into the color. But when you paint it white, um, it actually makes your paper, your image pop out better. So that is, yes, that was the correct answer. Okay, so... So anyway, yes, you guys. So I just wanted to show you guys these two little brushes. This is the French tip and this is the little Frenchie. And the reason why I wanted to show you guys, I'm gonna show you, um, and Lisa Boone from Lisa Boone Design, um, she was using those the other day and I was like, yes, yes, I have those in my stash. They are perfect, y'all, for doing round legs, I'm gonna tell you. And that's the reason why I left these, um, um, red for the moment because i want to show you guys these little brushes and they're and because they have this tip on them like you don't even have to get much paint on there see just a little bit on there but they are perfect for doing spindle type legs and i'm going to show you guys <clears throat> pull you up a little bit and excuse the bouncing around pull y'all in just a little Oh, Dorothy says, a gold on the legs and edges will help make it pop. Ah, yes, Dorothy, you know I love me some gold, girl. Okay, so this little brush, this little tip, <clears throat> again, this is the uh, little Frenchie. And look, y'all, this is all you do with this little brush. You just go back and forth. See how easy that is? So when you have legs that you're doing, round legs especially, um, this French, French tip brush is perfect for that. See how easy that is? And it even gets into these little crevices. Rather than having a brush that you would have to go up and down. Uh, Tracy says, are you on wheels? Yes, Tracy, I am. I'm on my little stool and it has wheels on the bottom, thankfully. I am on wheels, girl. But yeah, so this little French tip brush here is perfect for doing round legs. Because you just go back and forth like this. And then, of course, you know, you will go on the other side, of course, and catch that side, too but it's just so easy. So if you don't own one of these, y'all put one of these in your arsenal because you will not be disappointed, I'm telling you. Because legs is one of the worst things. I don't like doing legs at all because, you know, they're so, you have to remember to go on the back side. And most of the times, you know, when I'm doing legs on things, I turn it upside down to make sure that I got every part of the leg. But if you're hand painting legs and they're round or anything with spindles, this is a perfect brush for that. And the French tip um, is actually longer. It has this really long handle. This has a shorter handle, but still long handle helps to get in corners and you can actually reach back there and get into the corners of things. So I'm just going to go down to the bottom. I'm not going to finish painting these because there's no need for you guys to watch me paint. But I just wanted to show you the little Frenchie and the French tip. 
Okay, so that's what these are good for, y'all. All right, and we're gonna put those away. Let me find a place to put them. I'm gonna put them over here, out of the way. All right, y'all, so the first thing I wanna show you guys is, I wanna show you guys the masking technique. So, has anybody ever done masking before? Because I've only done it one other time. And again, I had to make my own mask. But with this seashore, um, seashore stamp, it actually comes with the mask. So you don't even have to make them. So I'm going to show you guys that. All right. And one of the things, y'all, um, that um, in case you don't know, when you first get your stamp, your new stamp, um, you want to make sure to take like, um, like a 220 grit sandpaper and just kind of scrub, not screw it, but just kind of, you know, lightly go over each stamp. And that just helps to season it, um, because it's new so that you'll, you'll be able to get a better grip, um, on your stamp when you start to use it. So that's just for the new stamps and you only have to do that one time. Okay, so the plan is to put my octopus here. Um, and we've already said why we painted it white because we, would, we really want the colors of that octopus to stand out. But what I'm gonna do on these sides, and what I did over here, y'all, did I tell you this is just a blend? I took some of the white swan, which is this, and I blended it with the blue iris, which is this, and I came up with a kind of a lighter blue color and then I added in a little bit of uh, Monet's Garden. I kind of blended that in as well. And I did a swirl technique to kind of imitate water. Um, and that was just to pick up some of the colors in the octopus paper. So that, that's what that was for. But what I plan to do on this side here and on the other side as well is I plan to do some of these um, um, seashore stamps on, these, on that side. And my octopus paper isn't long enough to go complete, so I'm going to trim out with some of these seashore stamps on each side. Okay, so I want to show you guys masking. All right, so, so for instance, on this stamp, y'all, there's so many goodies on this stamp. I think I want to use um, this big shell right here as one of them. And when you get your stamps, they're going to be really stuck on here. And it's going to seem like you're tearing them, but you're really not. You are, they are very, um, very tough. So you're not going to tear them off at all. And that's kind of what it looks like. That's a pretty big one, right? And so we're going to use this stamp to actually kind of go around here. But one thing we want to do is we want to go over here to these masks that came. And so for every stamp, there's a mask that goes with it. So let me open this and show you guys what these masks look like. Because I thought that was pretty cool. So not only do you get a two pack, you actually get all the masks that go with it. So this is the mask for that seashell. Can you guys see that? For that seashell that I just pulled out. And as you can see, it fits, oh, I turned it around. It fits perfectly over the stamp, just like that. Okay, so I'm gonna show you guys how that works. Okay, so to do the masking, I am going to be using the um, IOD inks. So you can also use paint with your stamps. Scoot you guys back just a little. But I'm gonna be using the inks tonight. So y'all, I got stuff everywhere. I'm trying to move some of this stuff out of the way. Okay, and bring my little table out. Y'all know my little TV tray. One day I'm gonna have a real live work table, but it won't be no time soon. 
Okay, let me scoot you guys back just a little so I can pull you down so you can see the table. All right. So, put the sponge applicator away. This is the Seashore Mold. We're going to be using that too. We're going to put that away for now. So, I want to use my stamp. This one, here's the mask that goes with it. You guys see that? There we go. Okay, so I want to use that. I'm going to use, I'm just going to stamp it in black, okay? So I'm going to take my black, this is the ink uh, pad, and this is the black decor ink, and they come in a lot of different colors. And I'm just going to take my black, I'm going to load up my ink pad, And I just kind of do do this. I just kind of do mine back and forth. It probably already has some ink on it. Until, until you see it disappear and saturate into the pad itself. All right. So I'm going to take my ink pad now. And I got my stamp. And I've already seasoned it with my 220 grit sandpaper. Um, hi, Sonia. Um, with my 220 grit sandpaper. So I'm now just going to take my little ink pad here, my black ink. And I'm just going to stamp it out. And I could use my brayer as well. Um, I have a brayer and you can use your brayer and run it over the ink pad after you fill it with ink and actually put um, more ink. But I don't think I have enough ink, so I'm gonna put a little bit more ink on. So you can actually rub your ink, rub your brayer over your ink pad as well. But I kinda like stamping mine. Just so gonna add just a little bit more ink, just to make sure I have enough to get a good impression. There we go. Okay, that's my first shell. Now we're gonna prepare to stamp this down. And I'm gonna take, I'm gonna raise you guys up so you can kind of see what I'm doing now. And bring you in some. Okay, now I'm going to take my shell that I just stamped. I'm going to stamp up. Excuse me as I cross the camera. I'm going to take my shell. I'm just going to find a place to put it here on my... Um, lay it down. And you know that once you um, get your stamp in place, you want to hold it with one hand and kind of do a firm press with the other. And if you switch hands, just hold it with the other hand and do a firm press. Once you get it down, you really don't want to shift it because it will distort your image. Oh, look, y'all, that came out so pretty. Can you guys see that? Let me bring you up some so you can see that. You guys see that? That came out really, really pretty. Didn't that come out pretty? Oh my gosh. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and dry this really quick, y'all. So forgive the noise. But I'm going to dry this really quick so that um, um, we can go on and I can show you guys the masking part. So it needs to be dry. And the inks do take a little bit longer to dry. So before you do your masking, you want to make sure to, to make sure that your, your, your surface or your image is dry before you mask it. Okay. 
And then ink does take a little bit more time to dry, you guys. But that is a beautiful image. That stamp has so much detail. The paints are not that, um, the paints do not take that long, as long to dry. And the more ink you put on, the longer it takes, so. But it's getting there. So did anybody say that they, um, that they've ever used, uh, masking before? I ever tried masking? I've only done it one other time. Okay, we're almost there, y'all. I think we're good. All right. So, now... We've got our first um, seashore item on, but we need to do another one so that I can actually show you guys how masking works. So I think we're going to go with, um, let's see. So that's the mask. Let's go with, um, which one do you guys think we should go with next? What did I do with my other mask set? Here it is. Okay. Maybe, um, how about this starfish here? He's nice and big. I think he's pretty. So we're going to go with him. So I'm just going to pull him off. And y'all, the first time I started using these stamps, I was like, oh Lord, I'm going to break it. But they really do not break. All right, so here's the starfish. Now, I am going to have to get some ink on him, but I wanna go ahead and put you guys back so that I can go ahead and ink him up, and then I'm gonna show you guys how the mask technique works. All right, so hold on, you guys, here we go. Back to the table. Sorry for the bouncing. Okay. All right, so here's our starfish now. Right here. Turn you guys a little this way. There we go. Okay, here's our starfish. We're gonna go ahead now and get some ink on him. Now, this is where the masking part comes in, y'all. So, to mask off, and basically what masking does is it gives you the illusion that something may be sitting on top of something. So, turn you guys over here, and you see we, are, we have our image right here. So I'm gonna go ahead now and I'm gonna take the mask, which is this little thing here, which is an exact cutout of the image that we put. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put it on here. I'm gonna lay it down right on top of my image. So I have my mask down. So now what I'm gonna do, y'all, I am going to take this little starfish that we just inked up and I'm gonna take him now, and let me bring you guys in just a little. So I've got my mask laying down on it. You may not can tell because it's clear, but I'm gonna take my little starfish now, and I'm going to lay him partly over the mask and over the shell and partly off of him. 
me see. Figure out how I want him. Uh, maybe like this. Drop him down there. I press him in. Just like I did the other one. Can you guys see that? I press him in. Put you guys in just a little. Sorry for the shaking. Okay, I got you guys. I got him down here. I just laid him partly over the mask and partly off of the mask and onto the table. I'm just pressing him down firmly. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and lift him up. What a great image that came out. But now I'm going to also lift up my mask. So can you guys see that? So if you see now, it looks like the starfish is laying underneath the shell. Because I use that mask to mask off the shell, I only got part of the starfish. Because it really looks like now that that starfish is laying underneath that shell. So that's what masking does, y'all. And it's a really cool trick. So as you can see, the mask from the shell, I don't know if you guys can see that. But if you can see that little bit of black on there, that is the other leg of that starfish. So I use the mask to actually mask off the shell and then put my starfish down. So now it looks like my starfish is actually laying underneath the shell. That is a cool technique, y'all. I was like, say what? When I first heard it, I was like, oh my goodness, where have I been? So that is a really cool technique. And you can actually make your own mask if you have a stamp that you want to mask off. You can actually make your own mask just by taking the, the first image, stamping it onto paper, cutting it out, and then you use that. Once it dries, you use that as your mask, just like this, um, just like this sheet. So I could have uh, stamped the shell. Let's say this is a piece of paper. I could have stamped the shell on a piece of paper, um, let that paper dry, cut this out to this shape just like this, and then use that paper that I cut out in that shape to mask as well. So, but fortunately for us, this seashore stamp comes with the, all the masks that you need for every image, which is really, really cool. Okay, y'all, so now, Let's see, what else can we add? Because we are doing underwater whimsy tonight, y'all. So let's see, what else could we add to this seashore? This is a cool stamp because it has so much stuff on it. I mean, that's just one pad. I mean, and you get two. Like, you get a whole nother pad. Here it is right here. So let's see, how about we add so we did the starfish let's add that little seahorse y'all because i love a seahorse i'm gonna add that seahorse for that doggone seahorse that i never got when i was little out of that magazine so we're gonna add one of these little seahorses here and we're gonna actually do him let's do a seahorse and then i like this little shell thing right here let's take it off too and again you just pull these off they seem like they're gonna break but they're not okay now let's go back to the drawing board because we're going to get a little bit of different color ink on here because you know we don't know what color stuff is under the sea because we ain't never been under the sea. Well, at least I haven't. All right. So when you get through with your stamps, I just usually take some baby wipes um, and wipe these off. Except that I don't know what... Oh, here they are. I just usually take a baby wipe. I keep these on hand. And I just take a baby wipe just to wipe off the ink before it dries and then your stamp is ready to use again all 
All right. So let's go ahead and do, we're going to add a little bit of um, green. How about that, y'all? We're going to do a little of this green. And so you want to make sure that you, you know, when you're putting your um, colors on your, on your ink pad that you're using one ink pad per color. So this, and I mark them on the back. I put the names on the back. So this one is New Grass, and this is New Grass Ink. So, so I know that I have New Grass on here. So I'm going to go ahead and load up my ink pad again. Because I don't remember how much ink I have on here. But this one is probably has some ink on it because it's taking a little bit longer to saturate. So it probably already had some ink loaded in there. And once you put the top back on, you know, the ink actually stays. So, so that's new grass. We're going to go ahead. I'm going to put it on this little shell here. You guys see that? Yeah. So I'm just dabbing it on. These um, stamps, y'all, they have just have so much detail. All right, and I'm going to go ahead and put him on my little seahorse, too. He's going to be a green seahorse, because I imagine that had I got that seahorse out of the back of that magazine, like they said I was supposed to get, that he might have been in green. I don't know, because I, I never got a chance to see, because they didn't grow. Yes, I'm still hurt by that. But fortunately, thanks to IOD, I now have a seahorse. Okay, so we're going to go back to our table, y'all. I'm doing a lot of moving y'all around tonight, but we're going to go back to our table, and we're going to add our other two little underwater things here. So we're going to add this pretty little shell. And this cute little seahorse. Okay, so put him here. Just take a shell and just find, you know, find where you want to put him. I'm gonna put him up in this corner, I think. Can you guys see? And once you drop it, you guys, once you drop it, there's nothing left to do at that point but press it down. Because you don't want to pick it up and move it. There we go. So I got my shell down. I'm going to hold it with one hand and press with the other. And pick him up. And there we go. What a cool image. All right, so that's the shell. Now let me find a place to put this little seahorse. Maybe I will put him, let's see, I'm just going to kind of turn him in all different directions. Let's see, maybe, maybe I'll put him right here beside this shell. All right, so I've dropped him down in place. Can you guys see him? I'll put him right here. Pressing him down. Trying to get all the spots. His tail came up, so hopefully I didn't pick him up. There we go. Oh, look how cute, y'all. Can you guys see that? Look how cute that is. That is a great impression. So... That is what we're going to do on the sides of this piece. Now, <clears throat> I showed you guys the masking, and I could definitely go along um, and mask off this shell, and I could drop something else on there. I could do that as well. But, um, and, but you know, I don't want to take up time. I just wanted to show you guys how the masking technique works. 
And to let you guys know that with the seashore stamp, um, you actually get the masks that come with it. I mean, there's no like, you know, like you don't have to do the mask yourself. You, you actually get the masks that come with each image in that two pack. And that is, that's a great thing. Um, so if you guys have never tried masking, um, you definitely want to try masking. Okay, let's get started on our decoupage now. We're going to come back. I'll come back to this. I'm going to do the same thing on that side, just using various things from the seashore stamp. Um, but I want to go ahead and try to get our, um, we have about, looks like 20 minutes. So I want to go ahead and try to get our um, octopus on tonight. All right. So. Here he is, again, with all these vibrant colors, y'all. Just gorgeous. So he is going to go right here, kind of in the center of the table, um, which is kind of why I kind of did these colors on the side, just to kind of blend in with kind of what's going on in decoupage paper. But leaving it white underneath so that the colors, the, there's such vivid colors in this paper, those colors will pop through. Okay, but the one thing I want to do, and you guys have seen me do this before, I want to take, I don't want to leave this straight edge on each side. Now, as for the back and the front, I'm going to actually fold those down so it's okay for those, but I don't want to leave the straight edge on each side. And you guys have seen me do this before, but I'm going to go ahead and do it again. And all I need is a little bit of water. And I'm going to take that out of my little water bottle here. Just put a little water in my cup. And I don't need much at all. But the one thing I do need that I did not grab, you guys, is a small brush. So hold on one second and let me go grab a small, tiny brush. Just when I thought I was all prepared, y'all, I forget the doggone brush. But all I need is this little tiny brush because what I'm going to do is I am going to take my water and I am going to um, just kind of make what I call a ragged edge along the side of my paper. I'm going to slide this under here. And go that way so I don't ruin the images that I just put on there in case the ink's not dry. I'm going to slide my paper just like that and I'm going to use this bottom part and I'm just going to dip my uh, paintbrush in the water just like that and the whole goal is just to get the paper wet. So I want to take off this edge. So I'm just going to run along the edge with this water. This is such a simple technique, y'all, to get this organic edge by just using some water. Because I don't want the straight edge on here. And then I'm just going to take and peel the paper off. Can you guys see that? Where I'm just going to peel the paper off where I ran the water. And what it does is it gives you this real organic looking edge. And you can, you don't have to have that straight edge. All right. 
So there we go. Can you guys see that now? See, so I have this frayed edge now rather than that straight edge. So I'm going to go ahead and go over and I'm going to do this other side over here. And then we're going to go ahead and lay him down. Excuse me, I'm going to cross the camera real quick. So we're going to do the same thing over here on this side. And again, I'm just taking off the... I just want to take off this, um, this edge here. Just because I want a more of an organic looking edge. And it's just so easy to do, y'all, with just water and a brush. Just a brush and some water. Just run it along the edge. And I kind of like do mine up and down, you know, just so when I go to tear it, it also doesn't tear in a straight line. It just kind of tears. Whichever way I run the brush is kind of on my water line with the brush is kind of how it's going to tear. And I don't really want to take too much of him off because he's just so pretty. But I just want to make sure that I don't have that straight edge there. Okay, so now I'm just going to start tearing off where I watered it down at. And that's going to give me a really good frayed looking edge and not the straight edge that comes with the paper. All right, here we go. So there we have it. So there's the second edge. Can you guys see that edge there now? I've kind of torn it along here. All right. So that's that. All right, so the goal now is to put little Octi right here in the center of our table. And again, I'm gonna go ahead and let him wrap over the side back here. And so I'll just take my sanding block and I'll sand that back. And then I'm gonna wrap him over the front as well. Just like that, okay? So, let me get my liquid patina and my little brush. And I like using the liquid patina, you guys. You guys can use um, any top coat that you choose. Um, but the liquid patina is great for decoupage, y'all. It's not too thin. It's not too thick. It is kind of like just the right medium for decoupage. So I'm going to be using the liquid patina to put this little octopus down. But let me get another cup to put it in because I use my cup. I use my cup for the water. Okay. So liquid patina. That's what we're going to be using. And I usually just put it, I keep it in my FIFO bottle here because it's just easier. Because the one thing you don't want to do, you guys, you don't want to um, contaminate your bottles, um, your paints, by dipping in and out of the bottles. Okay, so here we go. We're going to put Octi down now, y'all. Let's see if we can get him down. Scoot you guys back a little. We're going to start on this end, and we're going to work our way that way. i figure out where I want him. I've kind of already scored my line up here and kind of know I want him to hang over a little bit here. So I'm just going to fold this back. Really, I should fold back from that way. I think I'm going to start from, no, I'm going to start from this side. Okay. Start here. Take my liquid patina. Brush it on. 
the one thing y'all about decoupage is to make sure that you get enough of your product down because that will keep you from getting air bubbles in the middle because the middle part is what you can't ever go back and fix you know if it's around the edge you could fix it but the middle part you won't be able to so get my patina down and it does go on white y'all but it, it dries um clear all right come back with my little octopus now and i'm gonna lay him down making sure that i kind of got him where i want him this edge that I'm really concerned. I want to make sure I have enough down on this edge so that I can trim him off. Right about there, I think. So I'll lay it down. And I kind of always start right here with this crease that comes naturally in the paper. I'm just kind of pressing with my hand today because I did not go and get any of my plastic wrap and I'll put a little bit more right here on this edge because I didn't know how far back I was going to bring him but I can see that I didn't bring it far enough back and now you can see how that organic edge how having that edge actually makes a difference you don't have that straight edge. All right. So we got our anchor part down. Let's keep moving. Again, the reason why I used the white underneath was because I really wanted all of those colors in this paper to really pop through. And by painting white underneath there, it allows me to be able to see all of those good colors. But there are times, y'all, when I have used dark backgrounds underneath my color underneath my paper and I like it as well. But for this, I'm gonna peel it back just a little, kind of where I've already put, but I just wanna make sure that I get product right down there as well. All right. Y'all, I really, really should have brought my plastic wrap because that plastic wrap, if you guys have never used plastic wrap, I'm going to grab it right quick because it's just right here in this cabinet here. If y'all have never used plastic wrap, y'all, it is one of the key things to putting decoupage paper on. Just plain old plastic wrap that you get from the dollar store. Plastic wrap and parchment paper. Who would have known that the peas would come in handy? So I'm just going to tear off a piece of this plastic wrap here. If I can get it off. And that is what I'm going to use to actually just going to use a piece of this plastic wrap to actually lay down and press out the wrinkles in my paper.
because it just really helps not to use your finger because your fingers tend to be, it kind of sticks to the paper as well. And you can actually, this plastic wrap is just so much better for smoothing out those wrinkles, y'all. And y'all know how we get when the wrinkles come. You tend to go cuckoo. So you want to get as many out as you can with the plastic wrap. And then what I've done, y'all, what I do now is I actually go back. Once my paper, once I put on my top coat back over my paper, I actually go back with my iron and my parchment paper and I iron out the rest of the wrinkles. If, if indeed there are too many wrinkles for me to, dip, to be able to handle, I iron out the rest of my wrinkles, y'all. And it's like wrinkle free. All right, Octi, let's keep moving. We're almost there, y'all. Let me see, what time is it? I'm probably over time, aren't I? I got about five more minutes. And while I'm doing this, y'all, don't forget to send in your name suggestions for the two twins that we finished on last week's train wreck. I've gotten a, quite a few names, y'all, already. But don't forget to send me your name suggestion. The more, the merrier. I'm still just putting down my liquid patina. Making sure that I get enough on here. Making sure that I kind of pull it back to that last edge that I had and making sure that I get as close to that edge as possible. All right. Keeping it moving, y'all. Got my plastic wrap this time. Kind of smoothing as I go. And then just kind of smoothing out those wrinkles. So I'm going to switch sides now so I can get that other half down. And I'm going to change the camera angle so you guys can see down this way as we move on. All right. So we're, we're half, we've gotten half of them down already. more liquid patina and I don't like to put a lot of liquid patina in you guys at one time I just kind of try to put a little bit you know I'd rather keep going back and putting more than to put too much in and then I have to kind of try to figure out how to get it back in my bottle because I don't want to waste it so Then I try not to do too big of a section either at one time. Just kind of try to do a little section at a time. So that way I can make sure that I'm getting like I said, if it's on the edge you can kind of go back and get under it, but if it's not on the edge you'll probably end up having to take a pin and burst the bubble. All right. Got my plastic wrap ready. Just kind of smoothing as I go. 
And then kind of going back in and doing the circular motions to kind of get rid of some of the wrinkles. And I'll go back and pick up this edge on the end here. And he's looking pretty good, don't you guys think? He is so colorful and so whimsical. All right, we're at the end almost, y'all, so let's keep it moving. I'm going to be a little bit over time, but not too much. Not too much. Making sure that I get enough. Ooh, I got a glob. Glob of it. Not sure where that glob came from. It must have been already in my in my uh, patina. If I can get it off my finger. All right. Keep the train moving, y'all. I'm going to add just a little bit more just to make sure. I got it in every place I want it. And then I'm going to go back and just kind of pull this edge back just a bit and make sure that I got it underneath here, too. All right, home stretch. Get my little um, plastic wrap here. because the paper wants to pull back that way. I'll go ahead and put a little on this edge. It kind of covered up my seahorse, y'all. That's okay, because I can put another seahorse on there. I will go back and touch the edges on this back part. Because again, I'm just going to take my, um, I'm just going to take my sanding, my sandpaper, and I'm just going to take that edge off. But for the most part, y'all, we have him down. I'm just going to go back on this edge right here, and I'm just going to lay it down really well. But your, your plastic wrap really helps to smooth out those wrinkles. And then, again, like I said, what I've been doing now, y'all, is I will go back. Once, I put, once this dries and I put my top coat back over, I will go back. Yes, Barbara, you can certainly clip the paper on the edge in a few places, yeah, to help it lay down while decoupaging. Yeah, you can definitely do that. That is a good idea. 
because it, it starts to shrink up as you start to put the product on it. And so, yeah, I will definitely do that. I will go back and I will put a few clips here and there, but for the most part, I've got it laid down. I just need to go back and put product underneath there. So, that's it, y'all, for the moment. Our underwater whimsy is well underway, y'all. Well underway. So what do you guys think so far? I could not figure out what I was going to do with that octopus. And now, well, heck, he has found a home. So, and I think he's going to look really, really pretty here. So, so you guys, let's see. It is, oh, I'm over time, aren't I? It is actually 8.35. Or is it 8.40? So, what do you guys think? I think it's going to turn out really pretty. So, I'm going to trim off these edges. And Barbara did give a good tip. She's right. So, when you're laying this down and it starts to, to pull in on you, um, you can take your scissors um, and actually do a couple of clips to release some of the pressure. And that will allow you to actually lay it down um, a little bit better. So, yes, that is certainly one of the things that you can do so that you don't have to fight with it. So, yeah, for sure. So, we're well underway, you guys. So, tonight we did masking. Um, we're gonna go back and we're gonna um, do the masking on this side as well. I'm gonna actually use the jellies um, paper to do the drawers, the inside of the drawers. So I'm gonna use the jellies paper to do the inside of the drawers. I know that octopus, isn't that octopus just awesome? I mean, I, I, I couldn't figure out what I was gonna do with it. I was like, what the heck am I gonna do with that doggone octopus? Cause I have no key clue. Y'all, I'm just sweating. See, my hair is even wet. But anyway, so yeah, so this is um, so far so good. Again, we're gonna put use the uh, seashore stamp, the two pack. We're gonna do that along the side, on each side here. Um, and then we're gonna do, do the jellies paper inside the drawers. Um, and um, I'm gonna finish. Don't forget about the French tip and the, um, the little Frenchy brushes that y'all can use when you're doing the, um, when you're doing round spindle type legs. Um, and any of these things, you guys, you can find on my website at pecanporchboutique.com. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me. Uh, we will come back um, next week and we're going to finish this out. Don't forget you guys to name, um, to send me your name suggestion for the twins um, so that we can do a drawing next week uh, for the winner. Um, and um, until then, you guys, it was fun tonight. I love this paper. I mean, I'm in love with this paper. And I'm in love with the one, the jellies one too. So anyway, but for you guys that remember Jacques Cousteau, I don't know if you guys remember that, but do you guys remember Jacques Cousteau? He used to come on when we were little and he used to do these deep water dives and you know, you get to see all the stuff under the sea. Anyway, I was inspired by this paper to actually do um, something with it. Um, and I really couldn't think of what I was gonna do, but I'm happy that I found something to do on. So this is going to be just kind of whimsical, a whimsical piece um, done with the octopus paper, done with the jellies paper. Um, so lots of fun, y'all. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me this evening. I really appreciate it. And um, don't forget to send me your names. Um, and don't forget, if you guys would love to join, I would love for you to join my um, Facebook group is called Porch Paint and Polly Pop. And I put the link in the description um, along with the link to my page, I think, um, along with the link to my website as well. So until we meet again, you guys, y'all know how we say it from the porch. What do we say? Don't forget to bud, bloom, and be unique. Thank you, guys. Have a good evening. Bye-bye.